Well, good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon and welcome. It's good to see all of you here today. I'd like to welcome you. Hi. Good afternoon. Welcome, everyone. I'd like to welcome you to the 2022 CU Anschutz Research Awards Ceremony. We're delighted to see all of you here. This is really a great opportunity for us to come together as a campus, and as a research community to celebrate some of the accomplishments of, uh, of our members. And we've got a, a great number of people to highlight today. Before we jump into the program, I'd like to introduce Chancellor Elliman and uh, have him make some introductory comments. I'll be brief because the, the main event of this is for you guys, not for me. You know, if, if you think about it, we have three main missions on this campus, clinical care, research, and education. And if you view that as an arch, uh, I would argue that the keystone of the arch is actually research. Um, it's, the, it's the element of our three, and it's often combined with the other, it, it almost always is combined with the other two. But um, it's the element of the three that really attracts the talent across the board, not only in research, but also in, in the clinical fields. And so in, in, I don't want to over, um, overweight the emphasis on one or the other, but I think research is what makes us special. It's, it's also the, the brand differentiator we have uh, with our competitors in the, in the marketplace. Uh, and it, it really defines who we are. And we're doing pretty well. I mean, last year, uh, we got almost 700 across the campus all the schools, almost $700 million in new research awards, up, I think it was 8% from the prior year, which is a heck of a number. I think if you'd, if you'd looked at that number five years ago and said we'd be there, I think most people would have said I doubt it. So you, you all, not me, you all have done an amazing job. And, and I think having an event that celebrates not only the research that you do, but also recognize the talent that you bring to this campus, which is the foundation of who we are, uh, is a great idea. And I want to thank Tom and Lori for coming up with it. And, and I, hope, uh, I hope the award ceremony is fun for everybody. So thanks very much. Well, thank you very much, Chancellor, for those words and uh, for your welcome. I completely agree. And I just want to add a few comments to those made by our, our chancellor. So we're just delighted to be here today uh, as a campus to celebrate research and all of your activities. You know, we're a productive, innovative group. As the chancellor pointed out, we've been very competitive for external uh, research awards. We said for a while, a couple of years ago, we were saying there were 5,000 faculty members on campus. So now that number is inching closer to 6,000. And of those 6,000, there are literally thousands that are involved in, in research. And that research spans from basic fundamental science discovery work to population-based investigations and, and everything in between. We had the first award ceremony like this last year, and it wasn't at the, you know, the end of the pandemic, which is ongoing, but it's a certain point we want to stop and say, let's recognize some of the great activities that have, that have taken place during COVID and despite COVID. And we recognize two groups of, of, of people, essentially. The researchers who, despite all that, or maybe a, a contribution to fight against that, had continued to do outstanding research. We also identified research supporters, so people that allowed that research to go forward, uh, support members and the like. Um, we, we spoke amongst ourselves and said, we should make this an annual event. We come together each year and celebrate these activities. And everybody we talked to gave Lori and I and others a resounding yes to that. We put out the call for nominations. This year we received over a hundred. So it was a very difficult task to select the people in the room that we are we are delighted uh, to do so. And I, I think they're all very worthy of the recognition they're gonna to receive today. It's really our honor. Our basic plan for today is to go through, we're gonna announce each category, uh, recognize the winners. Uh, Laura and I are gonna do a little tag team here in that regard. Uh, after we finish our, our brief little introduction, you're allowed, uh, I'm sorry, invited to come up here and receive the award. At the end of this, we're gonna ask for everybody who received the award to come up here. We'll do some photographs and we have some uh, a minor reception outside and that sort of thing. So with that, uh, let's begin the uh, ceremony. So the first category is that of the Research Collaboration Team Award. This recognizes a team for their outstanding contribution to research collaboration. It highlights effective research collaborations within and across disciplines, utilizing a team approach to scientific discovery that brings together different perspectives with greater success and impact. 
This year, we wish to recognize the Synaptic Plasticity Supergroup. I'm gonna read the members of that group, and then I think Mark is gonna represent them for the, for the award. Jason Awuto, Uli Bear, Timothy Benke, Mark Delacqua, Fabrice de Bertram, Christopher Ford, Jasper Heinsbrook, Paco Herson, Matthew Kennedy, Wan Chan O, oh, Jamie Peters, Nydia Quillian, William Sather, Catherine Smith, and Chandra Tucker. I'm just gonna read a few comments from the nomination letter to highlight uh, this group and their successes. This team spans multiple disciplines within basic sciences, including signaling as well as optogenetic tool, tool building and imaging. It is composed of both basic and clinical team members, enabling basic discovery research as well as efforts to translate these findings to the clinic. The nominator comments that they are an internationally recognized group of faculty members that collaborate collaborate extensively with each other and with faculty and other school of medicine departments in studying molecular and cellular mechanisms of synaptic plasticity as they relate to the nervous system health and disease. They have further note that their collaborations are reflected that by virtue of numerous joint publications. For example, the last 15 years, this group has published more than 40 collaborative manuscripts with frequent publications in high, high tier journals such as Neuron, Cell Reports, in the Journal of Neuroscience. This time I'd like to invite up Mark Delacqua to receive the award. Okay, we're following that up with the Rising Star Research Award. Um, and this is an award that recognizes a junior faculty member who is emerging as discoveries and original scholarship. This is designed for researchers in the first three years of their appointment, so early um, career researchers. And um, honestly, we had such a great group of stellar nominees. We ended up having to pick two um, finalists. So the first one is Dr. Swet Ni Chen. Um, she is in the um, molecular genetics program and um, at the University of Colorado Cardiovascular Institute. Um, impressively, in the short time since Sweat Nia has joined the faculty at CU, she's a, a, been um, established her own research program and she's received three major awards um, the American Heart Association Career Development Award, the Web Wearing Betcher Biomedical Research Award and the Ludeman Center Women's Health and Innovation Scholar Program Award. She's established a very productive and independent research program. And recently she published a very important paper that was dissecting the biological mechanisms of filament C mutations, which causes a life-threatening heart disease using IPC-derived cardiomyocytes. She's clearly one of our rising stars on campus. So please join me in congratulating Swet Ni Chen. And our second awardee in this category is Dr. David Josh Duin. David was nominated by his colleagues. Um, he joined the Department of Anesthesiology in 2021 and is an accomplished physician scientist. His research on acute respiratory distress syndrome was critical for the evidence-based response to COVID-19 in terms of determining ideal interventions and treatments um, for ARSD in COVID-19 patients during early phases of the pandemic. Impressively, Dr. Duin has published 36 manuscripts since becoming a faculty member in 2021. So another clear rising star on our campus. Um, please join me in congratulating David.
Okay, so for our next category, boy, it's fairly exciting here. Everybody's lined up and this is wonderful. So our next category is the Faculty Research Excellence Award. This award recognizes the faculty members' accomplishments for their excellence in conducting research and scholarly activity that is highly original and makes a significant contribution to the field. It's intended for faculty who are positively contributing to the CU's culture and are acknowledged as leaders in their field. Today, we're recognizing Dr. Manisha Patel. So to read from this nomination, uh, the nominated notes, Dr. Patel is recognized internationally as an outstanding researcher and a leader in her field. Further, Dr. Patel's contributions in the field of oxidative stress and mitochondrial metabolism and toxicant-induced brain injury and epilepsy have moved these fields forward substantially. Her research has led to many prestigious publications and continuous and extensive NH funding since 2000, culminating in prestigious R37 Javits Neuroscience Investigator Award, which was awarded this summer. We'll also note that Dr. Patel has also been extremely active in mentoring both her PhD students and postdoctoral fellows in the toxicology and neurosciences training programs at CU Anschutz. Her dedication in pursuing grant support for students to pursue their studies and particularly for the support of underrepresented students via supplements, fellowships, and training grants has been particularly impressive. Please allow us to welcome Dr. Patel. Congratulations. A little wild in here, that's good. Uh, so next we wanna recognize in the same category, Dr. Kelly Duran. So Dr. Duran is a professor in the Department of Immunology and Microbiology. Her research focuses on bacterium group B streptococcus, a leading cause of neonatal meningitis and infection in immunocompromised adults. She currently holds multiple NIH grants. Furthermore, Dr. Duran was awarded a CU system AB Nexus grant in collaboration with Aaron Whiteley at the CU Boulder campus to study cyclic denucleotide signaling and type one interferon response. Dr. Duran has successful collaborations with numerous individuals at CU Anschutz, including Dr. Horswill and Dr. Jerkop in the Department of Immunology and Microbiology, Dr. Siegenthaler in the Department of Pediatrics, clinicians Dr. Garrett Moore and Eric Schmidt in the Department of Pulmonary um, Sciences. These diverse collaborations demonstrate her research interest and commitments to the CU com community. Collectively, Dr. Duran is noted to be an, have an outstanding research publication, record, obtaining funding, and inspiring the next generation of scientists. Dr. Duran. Congratulations. Okay, our next award is for Research Faculty Collaborative Award. And this is a really important award. Um, it recognizes individual faculty members for their outstanding contribution to research collaboration on campus. And specifically, it highlights effective research collaborations within and across disciplines, utilizing cooperative approaches and teamwork to address challenging scientific questions. And um, again, we had numerous, uh, it's so, so many great nominations. We ended up picking two. Um, the first one is Dr. Amy Hoopschman. And uh, Amy was nominated by her colleagues, um, Dr. Mark Ernest and Lisa Schilling. Amy is highly regarded throughout the university and beyond as an effective collaborator. She excels at promoting health equity by leveraging community engagement and invest investigator collaborations. Specifically, she joins together staff, faculty, and trainees with, within and across multiple disciplines to raise awareness and to implement best-in-class healthcare solutions. As a multiple principal investigator, Amy co-leads an NHLBI-funded Decipher UG3 award and seeks to reduce health equities in pediatric asthma. Amy currently also serves as the lead um, implementation scientist for multiple studies 
um, funded by the National Institutes of Health. Um, so please join us in congratulating Amy. And the second awardee in this category is Dr. Jay Hesselberth. Jay has been a really an instrumental as a leader in the RNA biology initiative in elevating RNA biology and associated computational analysis across campus. His contributions include acting as co-director of the RNA Biosciences Initiative, oversight over a group of postdoctoral fellows that he has actively recruited who lead the bioinformatics analysis pipeline for the RBI. And um, he's a director of informatics coursework for the molecular biology program. And he's on the Dean's Advisory Committee for the Dean's Distinguished Seminar Series. Among many other voluntary positions, which I couldn't actually list all here, otherwise we'd be here all day. Um, his his nominate, nomination letter um, mentioned that Dr. Hesselberg's unique and rare ability to communicate ideas, lead projects, develop successful collaborations and encourage progress are outstanding. Notably, um, we should note that Jay is co-investigator co on seven different grants. Um, and I think one thing that was really notable about this nomination is his nominator, Beth Tamburini, is not in the same department, is in a different department than Jay. And I think um, he has really, I know from my own personal experience, been a great collaborator across campus. So please join me in congratulating Jay. For our next category, we're going to talk about Research Staff Collaborator Award. This recognizes an individual staff member for their outstanding contribution in research collaboration. Specifically, it highlights effective research collaborations within and across disciplines utilizing innovative and cooperative approaches to the process of scientific discovery. Today, we're honoring Tyler Borko. To read from his nomination material, Tyler Borko is a clinical research coordinator in the Department of Neurology. Tyler is leading a novel community-based study which involves identifying healthy volunteers who are demographically representative of the 2020 Colorado U.S. Census to develop a blood-based reference calibration curve for biomarkers of neurologic disease. Tyler identified community organizations who are willing to partner with us while amassing a team of coordinators to staff these events, often on weekends or in the after hours, in working with individuals to coordinate these blood draws and other assessments. Finally, the nominator notes, would also like to highlight Tyler's strong commitment to health equity. Tyler is helping the Department of Neurology's diversity, equity, and inclusiveness team assess stroke preparedness and awareness in the African immigrant community and beyond. With that, let's welcome Tyler to the front. The applause is not fading. That's nice to see. It's getting a little more wild. That's fantastic. Okay, the next nomination is for the Research Administration Award. And this award recognizes an administrative staff member who consistently goes above and beyond to advance research excellence and keeps operations running smoothly across the University of Colorado Anschutz Medical Campus. And um, it's really a pleasure for me to say this award was um, for Michaela Montour, who um, was nominated by the Cancer Center leadership in a really amazing letter that they wrote. Um, Michaela joined the Cancer Center team in 2002, and due to her excellent administrative leadership skills and her exemplary work ethic and exceptional personality, accelerated her career from the grants manager to the director of the Cancer Center administrative team. Um, she and her team, I think we need to acknowledge both of them, 
played um, a critical role in the latest cancer center renewal. And um, her letter also indicates that um, not only is she a great administrator, but she um, is an incredible colleague. Um, and her presence is simultaneously calming, energizing. She radiates efficiency, confidence, and collegiality. Um, they also mentioned that she has a positive and constructive assertiveness and approaches her job with an attitude that is full of life and demonstrates to everyone that nothing is impossible if you have determination, skills, and success, and, and determination, skills, and work as a team. Um, Michaela is, um, I think, one of the items in the letter noticed that although sometimes we think people on our in our campus are are not irreplaceable, they say Michaela is irreplaceable for the entire operation and success of the University of Colorado Cancer Center. Um, I have to say in my role in the um, Chancellor's Office, I've had the pleasure of working with Michaela and I agree that this award is very, very much deserved. So Michaela, congratulations. <laughs> We love the enthusiasm, we really do. All right, the next category is Trainee Research Excellence Award. There are two uh, awardees in this category. This recognizes a trainee's accomplishments for their excellence in conducting research and scholarly activities that are creative and impactful. It is intended for scholars who show great potential for future research impact during their training. The first awardee is Michael Schaefer. A preemptive cheer, again, fantastic. Okay, uh, reading directly from the nomination letter, Michael is a superstar. He is truly brilliant, incredibly hardworking, and tremendously productive. He earned his PhD in bioengineering with post postdoctoral work on MRI and CVD here at CU. He then chose to go to medical school to become an MD, PhD. Michael received an abstract scholarship at the American Thoracic Society and a Young Investigator Award at the AHA meeting. And he has 55 publications since 2016, 25 as first author, including a recent first authored paper in circulation, reporting entirely novel results regarding MRI detected early aortic abnormalities in youth with diabetes. Reading one more excerpt. Michael is also all around hardworking and a, and a genuinely good person. He easily crosses disciplines and is adept at communicating across the board, whether with, whether with an MRI technician or a cardiac surgeon with ease and with a dry sense of humor. Coming from a technical background, I admire his ability to integrate and connect with the staff and absorb knowledge from his clinical collaborators. It says something that staff and faculty seek him out to get lunch, whether to talk about the latest research or just to catch up personally. Let's welcome Michael to the front. Wonderful. The second awardee in this category is Rachel Culp Hill. Again, reading from the nomination letter, Ms. Culp Hill is a, riding fifth, a rising fifth year student in the STBB graduate program and is completing her studies under the mentorship of Dr. D'Alessandro in the BMG department. She, is, she has driven her research in fatty acid metabolism in leukemia and published first, several first author publications. Noting another excerpt, Rachel has perhaps the most impressive publication record of any graduate student in our program. Specifically, she has published over 31 papers, including peer-reviewed and awfully highly cited articles that appear in Cell, Nature Medicine, Nature Cancer, Cancer Cell, Nature Communications, Blood, PNAS, and Cancer Discovery, an impressive list. In addition to her excellent scholastic accomplishments, Ms. Culp Hill has also demonstrated strong leadership skills and a strong commitment to educating the public about science. She participates in a number of outreach activities with a focus on exciting young students about STEM. Let us invite Rachel to the front. Uh, 
Okay, last but not least, we have the Research Mentor Award, um, which recognizes members of the CU Anschutz Medical Campus for their dedicated and extraordinary efforts to mentor others in their research and, and medical careers. This award is intended to recognize mentoring of faculty, staff, and our students. And again, we had so many nominations that we had a very hard time choosing. And so this one, we actually have three award winners. So the first winner is Dr. Andres Hineo Martinez. Andres was nominated by several medical students and residents, which I think is, says something in itself. Um, so there were several independent letters submitted in, on his behalf. They all mentioned that he is incredibly generous with his time and is always available to teach and provide guidance, whether it be directly related to research or with anything related to careers in medicine. In addition to, take, in addition to taking significant time for teaching and making a large research study more manageable, one of his trainees said he provides other opportunities for learning, such as working in the ID clinic, editing papers of other researchers in the group, and presenting at national um, conferences. He is a wealth of knowledge and a truly tremendous resource for students and colleagues alike. So congratulations, uh, Dr. Martinez, please come up. Our second awardee is Dr. Julie Siegenthaler. Julie also was nominated by several of her students and postdoctoral fellows. Her outstanding mentorship has led to their success in receiving grants and getting publications. They mentioned that she still does experiments in the lab, writes groundbreaking papers, and is um, a fabulous grant writer and even teaches a course on it. In addition to being a chair of what they say, every student's committee in the department. She also mentors um, for Scientifico Latino and supports clear direction mentoring activities within her lab space to help improve diversity, equity, and inclusion in STEM. One letter noted, our productivity, happiness, which I thought was really important, thriving scientific careers, invitations to present at international conferences, and a deep understanding of our project is only made possible by Julie's tireless dedication to us, constant inspiration, support, and thought-provoking conversations and a brilliant mind. So please join me in congratulating Julie. And I think we had all the enthusiastic letter writers here. <laughs> Thank you. Um, and last but not least, Dr. Marcella Pereleon. I'm sorry if I pronounce that, Preon. Um, Marcella was nominated by Mika Hammer, a PhD student in the School of Public Health. Um, she said one of the most noticeable aspects of Marcella's mentorship style is his generosity with his time and genuine care and interest in student-led research. His availability is unparalleled compared to other faculty she has worked with, and he is always quick to respond thoroughly and thoughtfully, often in more detail than the initial question would imply. Mika also noted in her nomination letter that um, Marcelo far exceeded my expe expectations for mentorship during the COVID-19 pandemic. His willingness to engage in the conversations that mattered most in the moment has been a lifeboat for me. So congratulations to Marcelo. <laughs> Here is a little mark over here. What an impressive group of people. Let's give one last round of applause to the entire group.
Well, I, I think this has been a wonderful event. It's a chance for us to come together as a campus, as a research committee, and celebrate some of the great accomplishments of our members. And as, as we talked about each of these individuals and team, you can see really the great work everybody's doing. Uh, these are individuals who contribute to our scientific community uh, by their work, supporting science, collaborating, and supporting the, the next generation of trainees, which is very important. I'd like to just say a couple of quick thank yous before we wrap things up tonight. I wanna to thank all of you for your participation, your uh, enthusiastic participation, and for being here uh, today. I wanna to thank those that uh, helped make this possible, in particular, Lori Sussel, who uh, led many of these efforts, and uh, this would not have been possible. The committee that helped with the selection, our uh, friends in audiovisual, they made this work. Uh, Michelle, Natasha, Shayla, everybody else in the committee that's done that. Um, we plan for another great event next year, so be watching for the nomination periods. Hope we get another uh, large number of those. So I would just say at the end, we'd invite all the awardees to come up front. We're gonna do some, some group photos uh, here. There are some uh, re refreshments available as well. So thank you very much. Have a great rest of the day.